Bonnie Snowden, welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Susie. <laughs> oh, it's a real pleasure to have you on. Um, I'm a big fan of your work. I'm going to give you a little intro. So Bonnie Snowden is a fabulous woman based up in North Yorkshire, England, and she's the most magnificent artist. When I first saw her work, I looked at it and I actually thought, wow, this looks like a photograph. And I, I couldn't believe it was coloured pencils. Bonnie helps people find their creativity and helps them get onto the paper with coloured pencils. And she's magnificent. She's got an enormous community um, and she's a very good egg as well on a personal level. So welcome, Bonnie. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely introduction. Oh, well, I <laughs> wanted to um, to tap your knowledge and your wisdom and, and have a chat with you about all things creativity. Because that's your, your thing. You teach people really how to do art, don't you? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Although it's it, not really. No, what do you do? What do you do? Well, you, know, you, you would think, wouldn't you, that I teach people how to draw and I do. But actually, what's kind of come out of the teaching side of stuff isn't the fact that I'm um, teaching people how to put this mark on the paper, how to use this colour, how to put these colours together. That's almost incidental. Um, actually, what's coming out of it is um, allowing people to be part of a community, allowing people to find their voice, allowing people to find their confidence. Um, and also, it's helped a huge amount of people be able to sort of almost leave mundane jobs that they absolutely hate and do something that they've always dreamed to do. And there's loads and loads of people who are, who are, are starting to be able to do that and um, purely because they're finding their confidence. And I think a lot of it is around that, that community side of stuff. Wow. Which it, post lockdown, we found that communities are everything, aren't they? People to, you know, people, very many people are on their own or, yeah, wanting some sort of community to be in. So an artistic one is wonderful. So, and, and it's interesting that you're saying it's not just about putting something on the page. It's, it's much deep, it goes much deeper than that. Yes, it does. Because, you know, as soon as you start making changes in your life, I mean, you, you know, you know this, Susie, you know, as soon as you start making changes, whether it is, oh gosh, I'm going to start doing some drawing. Um, it's not just a case of getting a pencil out and putting it on the paper that then causes all sorts of like reactions and emotions and all this kind of stuff erupts and you know you're thinking all I want to do is draw this thing on this page and then you, you know you become terrified you you um you procrastinate you're off I don't know hoovering or something <laughs> instead of drawing all of these emotions come out um and it's not because we're frightened of doing the drawing and everything I think creativity brings to the fore all sorts of little bits and pieces that need to be addressed mm. well certainly in my research when I was writing my book the art of creativity I found that thing one I didn't expect was that being creative is actually very healing as we hit often we're hitting blocks and so on and they're energy blocks of some sort and we can find them acknowledge them and push through them by doing things like creativity it's a, it's a fantastic way to clear out the blocks and it really make yourself feeling better and more grounded yeah it really is and I find you know people talk about being in the flow with all sorts of different you know if you're you're in the flow if you're sort of competent at doing whatever, but also if you are really, really enjoying what you're doing. And I think being creative, whatever it is, crafting, drawing, painting, to get into that flow where kind of time stands still, you're kind of in your own little world and everything disappears. Just everything just goes out of your head, all your worries, everything like that. And you can literally kind of pop your head up and think, oh my God, four hours have gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and that's that was such a nice feeling, isn't it? Because one of the things about getting in the flow is you lose a sense of time oh, and you wonderful. lose a sense of worries. You can leave those at the door as you get into your creativity. So I, I think creativity for particular people who are experiencing, experiencing a lot of overwhelm and fear and upset or they've yeah, they've had they've had grief to deal with in whatever respect to get keyed into a project where you can lose yourself 
is fantastic and is so good for the soul. Yes, yes, it re it really is. Um, you know, and I mean, I see so many people who have joined me recently who you know, were either told they couldn't draw or they thought they couldn't draw or they were a failed artist. I was a failed artist. I, I wanted to go and do a, um, a, a degree in fine art at, at the age of 17 and I wasn't good enough. Um, so I ended up being a tea girl in an advertising agency instead. But, you know, things are meant to be, aren't they? Um, so it, it, that was all fine. But, you know, a lot of people are quite, are quite sort of scared to kind of jump in and, and make a start. Um, especially if they've had those negative connotations with creativity and everything before but actually just being brave enough to take that first step and this is something that I um, with all every single tutorial I create every bit of teaching that I do the first step is actually putting a mark on the paper mm. you know you've got this big expanse of paper with nothing on it and it's just like well, where do I start mm. and the the I say the best thing to do is just start is mm -hmm. just put a mark somewhere and once you put that one little mark on you started and then yeah. it's it's plain sailing it's a blank on. page that's scary isn't it I, I was being someone this morning about writer's block and we were talking about just get it down it, this is for writing for instance just get it down on the page and it you know it, it just can be the shitty first draft we know that's not the final product but you're getting from from zero to somewhere and then you can start tweaking and playing with it but you kind of need to to get something down to then improve and work on it and make it better and I there's so many stories of people myself included you know I was I've written books on creativity and all sorts of related topics now and I was asked not to go to the art club because I would pull down the um the the average and I was asked not to take English because I would pull down the average because I wasn't very good at writing now I'm a published author so we have to kind of beat out of ourselves these negative programs that that perhaps went in when we were younger or we were told bad stuff about our abilities and many people have got real trauma around coming clean about their creative creative skills and, and find it very scary yeah yes it's it's funny isn't it and I think a lot of people as well end up being really really surprised mm. you know I, I was always told I couldn't do this I always thought I couldn't do this and oh my goodness look at what I've done no, I'm doing it I'm itching to ask you Bonnie can you teach anyone to to do art at a decent yes. level yeah. yes ab absolutely because um, you know, the way I teach, I teach in, um, I teach really in-depth, realistic animals. That's what I teach. So all of my teaching has an element of in-depth, in-depth techniques. Um, you know, it's not just, oh, we're going to do for beginners, we're going to do something really simple, like a triangle or a, you know, a pair or something. It's my, my philosophy is jump in at the deep end you know just just wow. jump straight in. that, that um, feels scary to start with <laughs> it is a bit scary but it's how I've learned everything and I just think you know um if I want to draw I and I want to draw an animal I want to draw an animal and I want to learn to draw a realistic animal and I want techniques and tips and everything that are going to help me to do that relatively quickly mm -hmm. so I break everything down and, um, you know, I, I talk through everything that I do and, and we, we look at it almost as like processes. So when people think of an artist, they think of somebody at an easel and they've got their berry on and they've got their, you know, paintbrush and they're all, you know, whacking paint around and everything. And artists can come in any form, any form at all. I mean, there's the most amazing art that's done on um, digital art at the moment. I mean, it looks utterly fantastic incredibly difficult to do um you know art can come in any form at, at all um so I like to break everything down and make it simple mm -hmm. and talk about the it's not just about getting the image on the paper it's about the feelings and the emotions that you have as you're drawing so I talk about the um almost like the psychology of drawing as well you know so we're going to be drawing an eye and I don't know whether you're like me, but every time I look at something like a cloud or a house or a, a brick wall, I see faces in everything. I look up in the sky and I see faces and shapes and everything in clouds. 
when I'm drawing an eye, uh, an animal eye, if I just draw the eyeball, it ends up looking really strange. And then I can't unsee what I'm looking at and it looks like a bird's beak or something and it should be an eyeball. So my, my way of teaching is I'll teach people to draw the outside of the eye first to get all of the structure, the form, some of the shading in there so that it looks like an eye when you go and put the eyeball in in the middle so that when they finish doing the eyeball, they're like, oh, this looks like an eye, not this looks like some weird shape on a page. Um, and this is what I try to sort of help people with, just giving them these little tiny tips that will enable their pieces to look really, really lovely all the way through. Because we have this thing in art called the ugly stage. And it is a thing because um, there are stages that look really horrible. But if you know they're going to look horrible and you're warned beforehand, then you can get through it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you don't know that something's going to look horrible, because with, with color pencils that I use, we work in layers. So you don't mix your colors on a palette. You mix your colors on the paper. So you have to layer the colors up. So it's not possible to get something looking really, really real, realistic with just one layer. You've got to have a, a, a few of them. Um, and as long as people understand that and know that, they know that when they get to layer two and it looks horrid, they don't rip it up and put it in the bin. They go, oh, well, hang on a second. This is part of the process. I can keep going. Um, and this is what I teach, you know, the emotions, the, the psychology behind it, things that will help people get through the stages that, you know, they're finding really hard. So it, it isn't just about putting the mark on the paper. It's everything. It's all encompassing. As you're explaining this, Bonnie, I'm, I'm seeing the parallels with writing. So I can write a chapter and if it's my first one on a blank onto a blank page on the computer or freehand or whatever, as I'm writing it, it's it's it is ugly. You know, the, the language is not nice and beautiful and, da -da -da and flowing and takes you along. It's just a clunky and a bit ugly. And it's going back and revising and editing and going through that makes then the language feel really nice. For sure, you can do you can do it as you go with three or four sentences. But if you're talking about a big chapter, for example, you've got to just get it down, get start with something and then fine tune and play. And it sounds it's a similar kind of thing to what you're describing. Yes. Yeah. So it's 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 all of the foundations, isn't it? So it is it is, you know, you'll have when you're writing, you'll have sort of like, um, you know, an idea of the story and, and what's going to be happening. You get those foundations right and then you tweak and you perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, you know, but I, I'm, I kind of steer away from perfect because I don't think it really no. exists. I think we need to be perfect anyway. No. Um, and, and with with the drawings that I do, it's very, very similar. So I'll start off with a base. We build the base up. We build the values. So the darks and the lights, because those are the most important things. Um, people think the details are important. Actually, it's not. It's those beautiful dark shadows, those lovely light highlights. We build those in. We build the color in. And then we put the details on the top. Mm. You know, so I'm looking, I'm looking behind you. There's a beautiful panda looking at us. Yeah. Is that one of yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we have a look at some of your, so we can get a, an idea of the kind of work that you do? Yeah, do you want me to go pick, yeah. pick him up? Yeah. I'll say, oh, you'll have, to ex you'll have to excuse. I hope you can cut this bit out as you see my big wobbling bottom as I walk <laughs> over to <laughs> Oh, funny, you're great. <laughs> Let's have a look at the panda. Oh, so this is the oh, panda. Oh, look at that panda. That no. is done, everyone, with coloured pencils. Can you yeah. put it even closer to the screen, Bonnie? Oh, look at that. And talk so we can get that in the main frame. Yeah. So, hang on a second. Yeah. Okay. Can you see him in there? Um, it's, I mean, he's on a, he's, in, he's all, all framed, but this is one of the, um, this is one of my tutorials that I've created um and it's all in color pencil just just color pencil um uh and i'm i've always been a bit scared of backgrounds so i've, I've always struggled with doing backgrounds in my pieces um and i saw this picture and i just thought you know what it's so beautiful the colors are so lovely i really want to have a go at back, uh, the background um so i created the background as well as the the lovely panda but what I try to do is I make things look, if you look at the wood, 
We can see the wood. Oh, now. yeah. So pe people were going, they were going, oh, yeah, the panda's lovely, but oh my goodness, that wood is amazing. Well, the wood took me all of about 10 minutes. And it's just about process. It's about using different pencils to be able to lay the pencils down, using um, like a wax-based pencil rather than an oil-based one, and then using a knife. I use a, something called a slice tool um, over the top to create those little wood effects. And every single one of my students who's created this has made the most amazing wood because it's a process. You know, you do this and then you do this and this is why you do this. And this is, happen this is what happens when you do this. Um, so, so many people have created this amazing piece and it's just, it's just fabulous. And he's framed in bamboo. Oh, which of course so beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so I love him. So I turned down a sale on this one because I wanted to keep him in my house. I don't believe you. I know. <laughs> so, um, so people who come to you, Bonnie, um, to get help with their drawing, uh, do, is it all levels that come? People who yes. just have perhaps have never even picked up um, yes. a brush or a pencil or, or whatever? Absolutely. So I've got a mixture of... Um, complete beginners so people who you know literally haven't drawn since they were at school and they've they've now, now decided that they maybe want to like a nice hobby in retirement or something like that or maybe they picked up something art during the the, the last couple of years and then they wanted to progress with that and develop um, I've also got a lot of people who are running their own businesses so they're, they're running their own portrait businesses uh, or they're wanting to do what I do so they're wanting to teach and um, I run alongside the actual drawing side of things. I also have Q&A sessions. I have confidence sessions. I ran a skills session this week around a, a specific um, surface that I use. And then I also run a business drop in uh, monthly as well, um, which means that People can come in if they have got a business and they're wanting to kind of grow their social media or they're wanting help with, um, you know, tone of voice or their content or, uh, you know, anything to do with with the business side of stuff. And then, you know, I can help them with that. Um, and uh, one of the biggest things that I provide is a critique service. What is that? So for me, critique is one of the most important things you can have as an artist. It's also the most terrifying thing you can have as an artist, because when somebody's critiquing your work, they're not really critiquing their, your work, they're critiquing you as an artist. And it feels very, very personal and it's really quite scary. Um, I had the most brilliant critique session back in 2019. I decided to invest with the most fantastic artist um, he's called Aaron Gad, he's in the UK, and I, I truly believe he is the best coloured pencil artist in the world. He's amazing. Um, and he offered a critique service, which I thought, I'm going to do this because, you know, I haven't had a proper critique before. And so I sent him some images over and I got his critique back, which was very um, non-judgmental, you know, all there to sort of help me develop. Um, and he told me my grey animals were fantastic. You know, so they're amazing. Um, your coloured animals, you're missing a whole hue, a whole range of colour. Um, and, it, and it's really funny at first, when I got the email back, I, was, I got a bit bristly. And I was like, what do you mean? All my pieces are amazing. <laughs> And then I was like, you know, gave, me, gave myself a bit of a slap and said, hang on a second, you've paid somebody to critique your work and he is helping you. And it was the best money I've spent, the best investment I've made on my art and my development, because he really helped me to see where I could be bringing in other colours, where I could be softening things, you know, where I could be improving all of my work. And what that's done is really helped me to develop my style. Um, and I now provide within my uh, within my membership. I now I provide a, a critique service. It's not um, you know you get about sort of five or six six minutes. Um, but I'll look at your piece and I'll tell you what's amazing about it. I always talk about the what's amazing about a piece because I think it's really really important. 
you know, we're very good at pulling our own things down. And I think it's important that we swap that and we always talk about the positives. And then I talk about what can you do to develop your work? So it's never about what's wrong with it. So it's never about this is really great. This is terrible. This is what you need to change. It's all about this is fantastic. So take what you've got that's working brilliantly and push it a little bit so that you develop to the next stage. Um, I My critiques have gone through the roof. Um, I do 100 a month, which is, which is bonkers. And I now have it on a booking system um, because I was getting inundated with emails. And of course, me being me, I just did them all. <laughs> And it was just too overwhelming. There was too many, you know. Um, so I have a booking system now and they go out on a Monday um, to different time zones so that UK can get them, US and Canada can get them, Australia and New Zealand can get them, um, you know, so that everybody has a chance. And I do 25 a week. Um, and the, the change and the development in people's work from having regular critiques is just, honestly, it's astronomical. Amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. It's amazing. And um, Bonnie, you, you talk about um, visualisation and you do some sort of cards. Tell me about that. Yeah. So visualisation is, is one of the things that is my, is the, my go-to strategy for everything, really. Everything in life, <laughs> I visualise. Um, and I've become really quite good at it. Uh, you know, when you practice something, you get better and better and better. Um, and I probably did it before but until I actually knew what visualization was and, and how powerful it could be and what I could do with it um you know I, I then started to use it with everything so it started with riding with horse riding and dressage visualizing a test visualizing you know riding the test everything like that and then I brought it into just everyday life and now I use it for my art and um for anything that's a little bit um, sort of scary really so you know like a big meeting or um, you know I had a, an interview on Sky News a couple of a couple of weeks ago I had no idea what's going to happen but I visualized what it was going to look like I made sure that I knew who the presenter was and I had to look at him so I could see his face and I could visualize how the actual interview would go because you know it was it was quite daunting um, and once you kind of have a vision in your head and you pull everything into it you can see what's going on you can hear what's going on you can smell smells a big thing for me um smell you can taste you can feel uh, you know the emotions and everything that come through it and you get this amazing experience in your head that it feels like it's real so that when you actually go and do the actual thing it doesn't feel as daunting because it feels like you've already done it like, oh, are you I'm talking done. like imagining imagination is, is Ima that imag imagination I to visualize something how do I do it well so there are people who can't hmm. there are people who can't um I can't remember what they're called now um at, 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 I can't remember what the name is but there are some people who can't actually put, see anything in their heads so for an example when I'm reading a book or I'm listening to an audio book. So I listen to the Harry Potter audio book when I'm drawing all of the time. Um, when I hear the words in my head, I have a film running. I have the whole scenery. I have the, the actors. Um, it's like I'm watching a film in my head. Um, and it's so strong that when I go and watch the Harry Potter films, I get really frustrated because I feel they've cut parts out of the film because there's obviously a lot of stuff in the books that aren't in the films. And I'll be sitting there going, why have they cut that bit out? And my children are going, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a, there's a scene um, when Dumbledore dies and he has his funeral and Hagrid is, is kind of walking down the, down the aisle, um, you know, to go and sort of lay him at the front. That's not in the, that's not in the film. Um, but in the audio book, I've got this huge screen in front of me and it absolutely happens. And there's Hagrid and I can see it all. <laughs> and that's what happens with me, with visualization. I can create a whole scene and a whole movie in my head. And there's, there's everything there. 
and and Amazing. you know when I'm doing when I'm doing something like um, if I'm planning my day and I'm doing something that I don't particularly want to do um and packaging is one of the things that I really don't like to do I I see myself doing it so it's almost like a it's not really an out-of-body experience but it's almost like I'm looking down on me doing the packaging and I can see time scales I can you know I can see all of that um and then when I come to do it it I just know that well it's only going to take me half an hour or whatever and, and it's all going to be fine and I've it feels familiar so it's all okay um you know so I, I use that for, I use it for everything it's a very powerful technique, isn't it? I'm, I'm intending to write a book about visualization one day, visualization and intuition, and intuition, because for me, they're very connected. And uh, I've, I've been interested in reality creation for a very long time. And um, what I've found is that visualizing is at the heart of how we consciously create things in our in our reality so the more that we it's like why affirmations work the more that we think about an idea and and run it as a movie in our head make it quite large colorful perhaps the soundtrack perhaps the, the more that we can get very specific and visualize and see it in our imagination the more likely that we can create that in our own reality experience it's a very, very powerful technique, and it's a very, very strong technique. And we can use it in everyday life. For example, passing, helping kids pass exams or going through a meeting that might feel difficult or creating something you want to create in your life. Run the movie ahead of time, and that will really help bring it in on an, on an energetic level. It's a really amazing technique. And, of right. course, with drawing and creating or creativity in any way, um, being able to visualize is a powerful technique to take you to that outcome of having created what it is you want to create. Great sculptors talk about being able to see the shapes within the lump of stone that they are carving out. They're, they're just getting this image out of the stone that they can already see because it's already here. I know it's it's absolutely amazing and it's, it's what I do with each piece you know with each new piece I start I, I'll, I'll have a vision in my head I'll have kind of worked out what techniques I'll use if there are any tricky bits I'll have worked out how I'm going to do it so that when I actually do it it's it's easier because I've already done it in my head mm. um you know when I'm when I'm thinking when I'm I teach live quite a lot so I'll be drawing and so I kind of have to think on the fly so I'm talking as well as thinking about what my next thing's going to be um, and the way my brain works is that if I'm I look ahead so I can be talking something through and then I'll be working on a on a on a portion and in in my head I'll be thinking right I need to do this that and the other and what pencils I'm going to be used for that and, and what how I describe it is that I'll have colors floating into my head so I'll have a color floats in and then another color goes on the top of that color because that's how we use the color pencils with layering and if those colors don't work then one of them will fly off and then another one will come in and then I'll see if that one works that's all going on in my head as I'm explaining three three stages prior to that mm. <laughs> it's no wonder that I come up with a load of rubbish <laughs> but that's how my brain works amazing <laughs> amazing buddy. and your work is it, it's very lifelike you know when I first saw it I think it was um, a dog I saw that you had you had created, and I showed it to the guy who was sitting next to me. We were working together, and I said, "Is that real? Do you think that's a photograph?" He went, "Yeah, it's a photograph." I said, "No, it's not. It's one of Bonnie's drawings." He couldn't believe it, and um, so this lifelike nature, and we can make lifelike things happen in our own mind's eye, and then transfer it into some medium whether that's on a page or in form of writing or whatever it's in and how exciting and magical that process is it's a real magical process we're involved with and yeah. it involves our heart it involves inspiration and connect connectivity to this incredible field of all possibilities it's a very exciting concept Yes, yes, it, it really is. And, and what, what I love about it is that I can share everything that I know mm -hmm. and I can pass that on to other people and they can actually start to create stuff that 
that has it's not just about oh gosh I've done what what a lovely picture I've done but it instills something in them it makes them believe that they can actually do something mm, um, and that then has yeah that then has like this knock-on effect on everything else in their lives it's what what we're saying very clearly is that you can be taught creatives yeah. you can be taught to to draw and create beautiful things on on a page no matter what you've been told when you were younger or growing up about your talents there's a way to develop those and to enjoy it and to find some sort of progress in who you are through doing that yes absolutely Bonnie I have so enjoyed chatting to you about creativity and drawing where can people find you Bonnie so I'm on I'm on social media. So I'm on Facebook, Bonnie Snowden Academy. I'm on Instagram, uh, Bonnie Snowden Academy. Uh, my website is bonniesnowdenacademy.com. Um, I've got all sorts of downloads and stuff. You can join my wait list because my uh, membership opens again in April. Great. So I'll put yeah. some notes. Up. I'll put some show notes on on the episode as well. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for joining us. Oh, it's my it's been pleasure. A real pleasure talking to you. You are one of my favorites and an extraordinary creative and I'm so glad you shared some of the inner workings of Bonnie Snowden today so a big thank you. Thank you ever so much Susie. All right take care now. Thank you. Bye. Bye.